today. It's about time I put this Fermentosaurus together. Um, been busy, been away, been to Queensland for holiday. Uh, and uh, a hop festival. I've just been busy, you know how it is with kids and holidays, school holidays. Anyway, I'm gonna brew tomorrow and hopefully use this. So we'll try and get it together. There's a few parts you get that's a bit hard to see against my black shirt or against anything, isn't it? This bit and this bit. Now you might be tempted once that's inside the Fermentosaurus to t screw that on there so it looks nice and smooth against your fingers, but it actually goes the other way because there's a little lip there that sits nicely against the lip that's on here on an angle so it locks into the Fermentosaurus nice on the right angle. Now, I did watch Key's video a couple of months back and he lubricated this um, just so it was easy to uh, spin against the uh, plastic. So it might make it easier for this spin and this easier for this one to spin and not so easy for the one with the rubber seal on it to spin. So I'll give that a go too. Alright, I better do the lubricating first because I don't want to be stuffing around with that once I get that thing balanced in there. I do have, you can use, um, oh is this broken now? I've just dropped it. Um, uh, any sort of tap washer food grade sealant, most tap washer stuff is, or you can buy the proper stuff at the brew shop. It'll probably cost you a couple of bucks more that uh, can assure you any food grade tap washer sealant will be fine. I could spray it on directly but it's probably go everywhere. The spray bit of that on, just write that on. You only need a touch, it's food grade. It doesn't matter. Alright, now to get this into the bottom in the right way around. Oh, look at that, first shot. First go, and it landed and popped in. I've still got to try and keep it there while I screw this on. Make sure that the right way, and it's a uh, reverse thread. Hang on, it might be easier to hold it on with my finger like that. And that is a reverse thread, so you have to screw it anti-clockwise. And that's going on first go. That is first go, I was impressed by that. <laughs> Didn't think that was going to happen. Tighten that up nice and tight. I mean, not, don't go overboard of course, like any of these things. That should do it. There we go. All right, after that, it's as simple as screwing on. You could lubricate this seal too. Make sure that there is seals. Uh, hang on. You can see there's this tiny black seal in the middle. If I hold it still enough. Make sure they're there. This screws on, which is your butterfly valve, the right way, the normal thread. That way you're not fighting each thread, you know, they're not fighting each other. Again, don't over tighten things. There's no need to with O-rings. That sounded a bit condescending, didn't it? I don't mean to, but just don't, you really don't need to over-tighten things. I think that's the most problem people have. Jeez, basically that's it. Now, on the bottom, once that's on, uh, you can screw in. People were asking about filling for bottling. Um, and you wouldn't want to do a pressurized this, of course, but there is, you can screw that on into your butterfly clip, butterfly valve before you open it. Just like that. Oops, like that. Like that. And you can use that to turn it off and off, or you probably have a tap on your hose as well. Put a hose in that and you can fill bottles from it. Or, as you see what most people like, or one of the things, the yeast collection bottle, or you can dry up with it, screw it as well. Just like that. Again, don't over tighten things, there's no need. We've got a greasy anvil over it already. Basically that's at the bottom of it. Now, people were confused with my first video, and many people asked questions about the pressure system. Um, so, what happened is, I'll show you, people were confused about the pickup system and 
how it didn't pick up you know yeast if you did have yeast left in the bottom or hops left in the bottom and it's a floating valve system so I thought I would caught that on video and I didn't I'm just trying to work these this silicon hose onto the pickup tube and there you go like that it does go on I might be able to get it on a little bit more I should have probably should have lubed it up and the same with the other end I didn't use hot water that might help I don't know if you lube the uh, tube up it would probably help the stainless and there you go even though that looks like the gas tube it's not that is your beer line tube as you can even see from the connections there you go and that floats on top of the beer and hopefully that picks up your nice clear beer from the top and not from the bottom so it goes in like that now and the same top on just like that but hopefully that answers some questions people have. So that will float to the top and pick up beer from the top. And not if you do have yeast, happen to have yeast hanging around down the bottom, it won't be till you hit the bottom of your fermenter. Now you can, I'll probably explain this tomorrow when I'm brewing. I might get it out of the way here, it'll be a short video. You can start with this and leave it in. Even if you get a bit of gunk and krausen into that um, pickup tube, you can always hook up a little line um, to blow some gas down it blow it out if it, if it did block but you shouldn't have to I don't think now I thought I'd just even though I, I had given it a rinse and that I thought I'd put some um, water and some sodium bicarbonate in there uh, just to give it a clean you can't use hot water remember you don't want to use hot water with these sort of bottles uh, and I forgot about the measuring tape that tells you how much is in it uh, before you stick it on I'm not going to stick it on right now because I've got it on the stand and got water in it but I'll do it tomorrow. That red line there at near the top lines up with that line there. You can see, you can see it on this side. That line there. So you'd whack it on there like that and roll it round. Now it says it's around 35 litres full, and at the moment it's at about 16 litres. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another about two or three litres in, and that way I'll be able to flip it over. I won't have to fill it right up to the top and try and get everything wet. Uh, this is sort of like I do with my kegs these days. When I'm cleaning my kegs, I only half fill them, flip it over, give it a shake, let it sit there for that 10 minutes, turn it over, you know. Saves so wasting a lot of water. You can reuse this water for cleaning again if you want to. Um, yeah, so I'll give it a go. Fill it, put a couple more liters in it. As I said, I won't put this on now because the bar's in the way. Uh, is there a... No, there's no gap in the bar. So I'll wait till tomorrow to whack that on. It comes with a... Uh, thermometer one as well if you feel the need yeah so that's about 16 litres now I'll put 19 in that way it should be fine to hit all the surfaces when we turn it upside down What's that? I don't know, I wasn't counting. Were you? Because I wasn't. Where are we? That looks, ooh, that's nearly a good guess, 18 and a half, that'll do me. Alright. So I'm going to whack the lid on, and there is these little seals for the top lids. A bit of muck on there. And they go on the underside by the looks. I haven't used it before, but I'm guessing. Oops, with the, there's a little lip on them. And the lid faces outway, it's not against the lid. And they just fit on like that. That would go inside. This would be a good way to say so you can see what the uh, pickup tube is doing as well. And that will screw down, get the uh, pressure valve uh, lid off, get a uh, pull tab out of the way. And I think I've done this right. Turn it round. I don't know if I want to flip this over, to be honest. A bit soft boys. There you go. Should I risk turning this over? I don't know if it's a good idea. Should I risk turning this over? 
A bit. I don't know. Maybe if I put pressure in it. That's probably a good idea. Wait a sec. I'm just going to pop like about 12 pairs on here. There's only like I would for a normal brew. You probably don't need that much to do when I'm just to harden it up to turn it over. But it will do. See how we go, eh? Now she's hard. I haven't, I might take the bottle off just to, because I haven't put, opened the tap yet. But now she's hard and now I should be able to turn her over if I can lift it. I don't know if this is uh, recommended, but we'll see how we go, eh? Probably not the smartest thing to do. There you go. Now I can clean the bottom. I'll leave that for, oh, I don't know, half hour or so. I should have dissolved the, uh, the um, sodium bicarbonate a bit more. Like with hot water, you don't have to leave it 10 minutes, but we can't use hot water. So I don't know, I'll leave that for half hour or so. I'll come back and I'll flip it over again. Just remember sodium bicarbonate only has a life, a working lifespan of about five to six hours. So that wasn't too bad, and it doesn't seem to be damaging it. I could be wrong. <laughs> I could be wrong. <laughs> but anyway, we'll see how it goes. I should also mention that a lot of people go, no, it's not. <laughs> but it is. Sodium bicarbonate is a sanitizer as well. So that would be sanitizing and cleaning at the same time. But, uh, there's a lot of different reasons why people say sodium bicarbonate isn't a sanitizer. But mainly it's because people use shopping, uh, stuff they use for washing their clothes. And some of that's got soap in it and other junk that you have to rinse. If you get pure sodium bicarbonate, you don't have to rinse it. And uh, as I said, it only lasts about four or five hours, uh, five or six hours, they say. But, uh, and you give it, have to give it a bit longer soak, like maybe 10 minutes. Uh, and it'll be sanitized at the right dilution, of course, the same as star sand or anything else. But theoretically, if I was going to brew today, um, once I, you know, gave this a wash like this, I could just tip that out and fill it up and you should be fine. All right, back. Got me out. Um, I'm going to try and turn it back over the other way. careful of course otherwise you can really bugger things probably it's probably better ways to do this you should probably even roll it around on the ground a bit on some towels there you go that top should be clean now leave it for another half hour or so on the bottom empty her out oh yeah, I should show hang on well I've got the gas so there's gas in there isn't there so I'll get a serving um, where's that? It is. Got fresh beer in it from the other night. I'll just empty this little bit of beer out. I don't go inside it. But here we go. I'll whack that on there, on the beer side. Yep, that's right. that and I'll grab something to pour that into. Actually I'll just use the, the collection bottle eh? and I don't know if I can bring that closer so you can see. There's the pickup tube there at the moment. So that would be a beer and the pickup tube's under. This was good to do it with water and you would serve it like that. That's not dirt, that's from the beer left in this line. And that's how it works. Of course your beer would be up to here or as much as you could probably do it up to about there, whatever that is. Up to about there, whatever you feel comfortable with. And you can ferment under pressure too to keep the crowsing down a little bit. There you go. Now you've seen how it works. Again, I should mention, I don't know if that's recommended to turn it up 
uh, upside down to do that, but I don't know, seemed to work then. If you lube the uh, tube up, it'd probably help. Now she's hard. If you lube the uh, tube up, it'd probably help. Now she's hard.